This is a massive battle for the championship. And if Lori Heine can take this to the final, he's going to be primed and ready for Poland in a few weeks. But Piscotti, well, he could spoil the party and start another here tonight. Here we go. Yeah, through the gears, down through the chicane they come. Look at Piscotti onto the back bumper already. Heine and throws in that big flamboyant initiation, and it works for him once again. Piscotti deals with it, creeps up the inside. Piscotti knows what Lori Heine is all about. And look at Piscotti onto the front wheel for contact. And Pascoli has to shut it down. Heinen continues to run. Pascoli gets back into it. But Pascoli made his own mistake. He did. He went too aggressive. Way too aggressive. He hit Laurie Heinen. And I think he did damage to the car. Or he broke something in the car. Or something stalled him off angle. Or he dropped off boost. Or something happened. But Pascotti, he just went for it. That didn't work out. He, he, but he had to go for it. You're battling Laurie Heinen. A man who's been so close to a championship for two years running now and he's just not made it there and you know that Laurie Heinen once he's in the zone when he's there he's killer he hit the front wheel I do believe and it just upset the front wheel of uh, Kevin Pascotti wheel to wheel drifting look at this watch as he creeps down yeah look the smoke come off of both front wheels there and you know what it's very lucky that that front wheel of Heinen's didn't slow and he didn't put Heinen into a spin yeah, and I'm wondering, is there any damage on Piscotti's car? It's a pretty heavy hit to the front wheel of Heinen's car. I mean, you can tell. Definitely, I mean, not even going to say it, because it's still another run to go, and anything can happen. Anything can happen, but Piscotti just pushed that a little too hard. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Well, here we go. We get the green light ready to rock and roll. Piscotti to lead out Heinen for the spot in the first and second playoff. The, the, the fire in. Absolutely incredible. Piscotti drops way down, though. Can he get the outside zone? Of course he can. He knows his track by the back of his hand. Flicks it across the circuit. Heinen on him, though, as Piscotti goes deep into the wall. Beautiful lead line so far from Kevin Piscotti as he starts to pull away from Heinen. And Heinen not doing too much right now as he knows he's almost got this one in the bag. I'll tell you what, Laurie Heinen, he didn't even need to push that hard, and he did. He's confident. If he thinks he can go that close when he doesn't need to, when he needs to, he's comfortable in that position. I think Laurie Heinen would have taken that run as a bit of practice, which for, I'm not going to jump ahead, but I think that's for the final. Yeah. But Kevin Piscotti could still get a podium. I'm just going to put it out there. If he does lose, he can go third and fourth place playoff. He can go third and fourth place playoff, yeah. But for me watching that, honestly, I mean, we don't like to speculate, but I just don't see anything other than a mistake from Scalti in the chase. Laurie Heinen on rails. On rails the whole way through that one. I run. told you, it's a train station this weekend. Yeah. And he's, beautiful. he's driving. Pascoli's lead line is absolutely textbook as well, Dave. You can see yeah. that that man's had a lot of seat time on this track because he knows it so well. Look at that line. Well, here's my thing. Lori Hannon is driving like a champion. He's driving like a champion. He's going through every hurdle They're today. saying sorry to each other now. Yeah. Going through every hurdle. And these are two very nice gentlemen behind the scenes. Kevin Piscaldi, I think he knows what's going to happen next. Going through to the final of round five is Lori Hannon. Lori Hannon goes through to the top. Well, the top, I say the top two. Lost a lot of bodily fluid, but they'll be happy if they can splash some champagne at the end of the day. Here we go. Pavel Korbelinski in the lead, the final up for grabs. Yeah, who's it going to be? Korbelinski goes to that wild, wide initiation. And it opens the door for Torani Kavir as he takes one foot in. And look at this, Kavir bouncing across the circuit. He's aggressive, as he always is. But look at the lead line from Pavel Korbelinski. It's so dialed. It's in the zone. It's right where it needs to be. And Kavir needs to find that door, and he can across the line. I think that's exactly what I expected. Yeah, brilliant lead run, aggressive chase run. I mean, they've got it dialed now. All these drivers in this stage of the competition, it's, it's, it's millimeters now. It's all the smallest of nuances that the judges are going to have to look at to see which way they divide the bracket now. And Oh, Kavi is so close there, but watch Korpelinski, it's so smooth. He's like the best butter you can buy, Dave. Do you know that? It's the smoothest butter you can buy because look at the line. No mistakes, no excessive braking. It's absolutely flawless. I think you would show someone if we were back here on this circuit next year, this run, and go, that's what we want that's you to do. That's what you want to do. That's your lead run. That's your chase run. Look at that, just perfectly timed. I mean, Kavir here, just a little late on the transition, could have got a little closer, but then he makes up oh, for it. It's a big dive before the finish line. He makes up for it, and that's the bit the judges remember, just when you're on the door at the yeah, end. The exclamation mark. Yeah, the little full stop to yeah. say, oh, I was there, don't you worry about it. 
Here we go, we switch around. Kavia in the lead, Korpelinski in the chase. Let's see which way this one goes. It's got to be some wild style from Kavia against the consistency of Korpelinski. Yeah, can Korpelinski turn up the heat? Can he turn up the aggression? He's going to go for it, that's for sure. Look at this, he's glued to the rear wheel of Torani Kavia's 180SX. They fire through the middle of the circuit. Oh, and Korpelinski almost gets himself caught up on the inside as now Kavia goes on that perfect lead line. He's right to the edge of the circuit as Korpelinski now goes for a trouble. A big dive down on the inside onto the rear wheel. It's mirror image. Ah, oh, this is, I mean, I would not want to be a judge after that. Definitely not. Oh, I mean, take a minute. You're going to need it. Let me look at this one. So, Kavia, wild initiation. Big angle as he comes through that first corner. Korpelinski does well, though, on the inside. Stays with him all the way through. Now, at this point, Kavia has to get wide like Korpelinski did, and he does. Right to the wall he goes. On the transition, Korpelinski a little bit more timid on the first one, but then he makes up for it. So he's a little bit further back than Kavia was here. He goes all on the onside, kind of straight lines oh, it a little bit. Oh, a weird transition, to be fair. And then he gets back on it here, up onto the door. Not as fluid in the chase, maybe at that position. Kavia looks like he's going to the shops there in the leading position. Really calm in the car, not much steering input. But then this is a great dive from Korpelinski. Much more aggressive than Kavia was the other way around. Getting up onto the door, but loses a little bit of ground just at the end. I mean, it's really tit for tat. I, I have no idea. I'd say if they watch that back 10 times, they still they would, would not know. They would not know, no. I don't think they know themselves. Two handsome men with beards. Yep. I'm a big beard fan myself, Dave. I'll tell you what, these two guys have earned their right to be fighting for a podium this weekend. 100%. Like, no question. But judges will have to decide it of who is going to go through to the final to meet Laurie Heine. Will it be Kavia? Will it be Korpelinski? Let's see what happens. It's Tor Arne Kavia. He's going to the final. That is what Tor Arne Kavia needed for the last two years. That's what he needed since the start of this season. He needed to believe again. Well, here we go. Almost time to press the button okay, so and we, get the lights yep, going. Heard it. Issue with fourth gear of Scalti's car, and he said, I'm running it anyway. So he's going to have to try and do this in a gear he's not comfortable. Oh, here we go. Drama already. Third step on the podium. Up for grabs. Piscotti to chase in. Korpelinski. And they're at it from the off. Yeah, they are at it from the off. And look at this. Korpelinski knows that he needs to try and evade uh, Kevin Piscotti. But Kevin Piscotti will not want to let him get away. There's a shot at standing on the podium. Oh, and Kevin Piscotti's car just will not have it. It will not hang all the way around that long outside zone. And another wobble. And it just allows Pavel Korpelinski to drive away. Yeah, so heard from the marshal that the car is half engaging fourth gear so it's like he has to kind of wrestle it into fourth gear and that's what you saw there oh man not his fault but no. I mean it's the way we've got to have a good car and a good driver and sometimes the car can let the driver down and yeah. especially on a night like tonight but you could, I was just waiting and waiting as you were talking for this gear shift where Piscotti made the mistake the last time and you can see it happen clear as day Oh man, such a shame. And you know what, he's been flying all weekend and he looks dialed and he's, you know, putting down some incredible leads and chases. But look, you can see it here. Boom, and loses that momentum straight away and it's a big wobble and he has to reinitiate and get himself back into it. I'm going to ask a question, Ian. Go on, Dave. How do you chase that? Yeah. How do you chase Piscotti if he's going to stall like that in Korpelinski's position? Does he hang back here? I think Piscotti plays it safe, hangs back, and then makes a dive on outside zone five. Korpelinski. Uh, Korpelinski. Yep. Sorry. So Korpelinski in the chase position as they come off the line. Korpelinski fires in on the back bumper of Piscotti's car now. Will Piscotti's car engage gears here? What will Korpelinski do? Oh, the tension's building to the corner. We know it's coming. Yeah, we do know it's coming. David Stonte car into gear this time yeah. and up and goes. And in no problems whatsoever for Piscotti as he puts it to the wall across the line, the ball of Al Koblinski is all over him. I'll tell you what, that's even more heartbreaking for Kevin Piscotti because he, whatever he did there, if he just did it the first one, we wouldn't have this conversation. And no. I think we were going to know which way this one's going to go. Gotta say though, Piscotti threw absolutely everything at that lead run. Yeah, it was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful from Kevin Piscotti. Look at this. Nice and close to the wall, deep in the outside zone. The transitions were perfect from Piscotti, but you can't take anything away from Pavel Korpelinski. He's been flawless all weekend. So is the car. And this man is so consistent that he's dangerous. And we've said that before in qualifying. When we see those scores drop in. I mean, it's not official. No. But Korpelinski back-to-back podiums. Has anyone else done back-to-back -back podiums this year? James Dean, maybe? James Dean. Yeah, that's not a bad company to be in.
Just saying. Just saying. Let's see which way the judges go. Make it official for third step on the podium here at the penultimate round of the Driftmasters Championship is once again Paweł Korbelinski. Back to back podiums for the Polish legend. I'll tell you what, he's become a bit of a legend killer these days because Paweł Korbelinski, look at that, thanks to Carr. Now Kavi has got to prove, is this his day? Is this his night? Can he get the job done? Lining in the lead as the higher qualifier, Kavia in the chase, and here we go. Through the gears, down, no messing around. Big opposite fling from Laurie Hyndon, and, and Kavia deals with it. Look at Kavia glued to the door of the other S13 as they fire across the circuit. Kavia now waits for the transition. Hyndon gets himself into the wall. So does Kavia. No messing around, though. Back out of it again as they go deep. And Kavia goes for an early transition. Up onto the door, he goes as Hyndon and drags him across the line. Oh, it's knife edge. Knife edge from Kavia. I thought he was going in the wall. He almost did what Kevin Piscotti did and go in the wall behind Heinen, but he got away with it. That was a very, very fast run. I mean, the speed of that run compared to what we watched earlier today, they're, they're trusting this track now in their cars and their ability. I mean, look, they're just trusting everything. They're trusting the circuit's going to deliver, and it is delivering. Look at this from Toron and Kavir. The chase run once again, textbook, but the lead run from Laurie Hyden and textbook. He just couldn't get that done yesterday in qualifying, but today he can get it done, and he's proving that's a championship drive. He wants to be a champion, and he's driving like a champion. But massive aggression from Kavir. And I'll be honest with you that if Heinen doesn't bring the fight here, he's going to lose this because that's a lot of proximity from Kavia through the whole course. Just put it out there. This is no cakewalk for Laurie Heinen. He's got to put it on the door. And that, if he wants this championship, if he wants to get out of second place, if he wants to stop seeing the phrase second place, he's got to trust Kavia can get the job done here. He's got to put it on the door for Finland, and he's got to put it on top step of the championship. Here we go. Yeah, look at this. Nice initiation. Heinen goes late on the initiation. Gets that car set up, but Kavia's already up and gone. Flicks that car from left to right. Heinen, a big throttle. Dabs on the foot brake. Now looks for the side of Kavia, and I don't think he's had that much proximity before as Kavir now starts to drive away. Kavir almost gets taken out by Heinen. He's glued oh, to the forget door. About it. Forget about it. That transition from Heinen, forget about it. That's absolutely insane. He almost threw the car, the championship, and the whole kit and caboodle out the window there. I'll tell you what, if he hits him there, that's the two cars written, written off. off. My goodness. And oh, up and until then, it was tit for tat. Up for then, I was thinking, this I'm, is the balance. I'm going to just go out there and say, I don't think that Heinen had as much proximity in the first half of that run as Kavir did. Complete, I was going to say, agreed. Kavir was, was, you know what, starting to drag this one away. I think Kavir was like one foot on the top step of the podium. But then from here on out, Heinen started to trust Kavir, started to lean on him a little bit. They got through this outside zone, and then... Behind and said, you know what, no more messing around, took time a risk. to get the job done. Took a big risk here. Man, this transition was scary. If we see that from the outside again, look at this. Watch this. Doesn't even make sense, watch. Oh, come on. Oh, we, even the drone God. can't figure it out. And he was closer than Kavir across the line. Both lead lines were exceptional, <sighs> but for me, sealing the deal was, was Laurie Heinen on that I mean, final outside zone. Well, we're getting a decision from the judges. Winning round five in Hungary is Laurie Heinen gets the win. Laurie Heinen's won it. He's won the event. He can't believe it. Laurie Heinen, I mean, my goodness, what a night.